Good morning, I'm Chris Donnelly from Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and today we're going to show you some basic techniques on how to catch trout. Uh, what I'm holding in my hand today is a slip bobber rig and a worm for bait. And we'll cast this out right now and then later on in this video we'll go through how to rig this setup. In today's video, what we'll try to show you is a couple different techniques. One will be the slip bobber technique, and the other will be a slip egg sinker technique. Both of those are great for fishing out of a boat or also fishing off ashore. So hopefully after the, at the end of today's video, you'll have a good idea of how to get started on trout fishing here in the state of Washington. Okay, so one of the techniques that we're going to fish today is simply called a sliding egg sinker, and it's a great way to fish bait on the bottom for trout. And I'll go through a real simple way to rig this up so that uh, basically anybody can understand it. This is our main line that's connected to the pole. And the first thing we're gonna do is take this egg sinker and we're gonna slide it on the main line. It'll look like this. You can see it'll slide up and down the main line. Okay. The next step is to use a swivel. We're gonna use a snap swivel, but you can also just use a, base, a basic uh, ball ball bearing single swivel as well. I'm going to tie some knots here and we'll get a little more focused on knots in just a second. So we've got one knot here that we're going to tie to go to our main line and swivel. And there we have it. The most important part of this of this sliding rig is the leader. And the reason why that's the most important part is because you can adjust the presentation's depth by how long you make the leader. Today we want to be about two or three feet off the bottom with our bait. So I'm going to cut about three feet of leader off. And this will be my leader length for my slider rig. Now this is where we want to look at the knot. Uh, we're just going to teach you one basic knot today, and that knot is the clinch knot, and you can also find it called the improved clinch knot, but it's real basic. You go through the eye of the hook, you make a loop that you stick your finger in, and you wrap around the main, the line, five times, and then right back through where your finger is in the hole. And it should look like this. Now, monofilament is prone to, to burning, so make sure that you lick it, get it wet with saliva to break the friction, and pull it tight. If you can master this one simple knot, you can fish anywhere for trout in the state of Washington. This knot's as strong as any for monofilament as long as you make sure that you lick it. Okay. We have a tight knot on our leader. Now, this other part is going to go to our swivel. And we're going to tie the same exact knot. So through the hole of the swivel, my finger makes a hole. I wrap five times. I go back through the hole that my finger made. I lick it and I pull it tight. I trim off the end. And now we have a really easy, simple way to catch fish. We've had a slider rig for trout. Okay, so we've got our basic sliding rig, and you can see it. I showed you how to tie it up. We've got basically a three-foot leader. Now, the secret to using this sliding rig and having this length of leader is that the bait that we're going to put on here is going to be buoyant. Now, we know that trout usually like a worm, so I like to use a worm. And the old standby that everybody uses is a marshmallow. Okay? Now the marshmallow is the buoyant part of this. So as you can imagine, it's gonna go out, sit on the bottom and float up like this. It's visible, it's above the weeds, it's up off the bottom, the fish is cruising along the bottom, he sees this presentation, he can focus on it and he can get at it. If the bait's down on the bottom, the fish can't see it. And we need to think about sort of the morphology of a fish's eye or his head. They can see up really well, they can see out in front of them really well, but they cannot turn their eye downward and look below them. So we need to make sure that we set this leader length at a height where the fish can see it. Now this can vary by the day. Sometimes it might be five feet a liter and sometimes it might be a foot and a half a liter and you're gonna have to play around with that. I always think two or three feet is a good place to start and then maybe go down and if that doesn't work, then lengthen your leader out. All right, let's put this out in the water and we'll talk a little bit more about buoyant bait choices. 
So we talked a lot about having a buoyant bait, and of course the basic marshmallow that you can buy at the store for a dollar a bag is, is certainly great. You can buy some commercially prepared ones that are colored that certainly are a great option. Maybe the fish prefer orange some days. You can buy these in green, you can buy them in pink. There's all different kinds of ways to, to catch fish with a marshmallow. So you can buy colored ones, you can use a basic white one. And really popular in the last 15 to 20 years has been these dough baits. There's a number of different manufacturers of dough baits. Um, the one I'm specifically holding may not be the best and you'll have to test with these. But the thing to remember about these dough baits is they're buoyant. But they're not as buoyant as a marshmallow. So you need to be very careful about putting things on the hook with these dough baits that, that are heavy and won't float. They're designed to basically use by themselves or to be used with buoyant eggs or other products that these companies create as well. So you really have two choices here. You can use a marshmallow to float your bait up off the bottom or you can use these newer buoyant dough baits that are very popular and very effective. Okay, our sliding egg sinker rig worked well. We just hooked a nice rainbow trout here. Beautiful big trout. All right, beautiful rainbow trout caught on our egg sinker. We'll get him up here and get him netted. Okay, there we go. All right, this is our egg slip sinker rig, and uh, here's the product of using it. Remember, we had a, a distance off the bottom there, and we used a worm and a marshmallow. Caught a beautiful uh, fry plant rainbow trout. The other technique that we're going to talk about today is the use of a slip bobber. Now there's a number of different bobbers out there that you can use. There's some that just clip onto the line. Um, there's some that you can weave through and they'll stop and you can slide them up and down the line. I like a slip bobber because you can control the depth that you can fish. You could fish the slip bobber 50 feet deep because you use a knot to be able to adjust the depth. So let me show you how it's rigged and then I'll show you how to adjust the knot. So the first step in the slip bobber is to put the knot on the main line. You can see it's on this piece of straw. We're just going to shove it off the piece of straw and it's now on the main line. And we're just going to pull it tight so it doesn't slide around too much while we're trying to get this rig put together. The next stop is that you have to have something that's going to stop that knot against the bobber. And what you use is a small bobber stop bead. And these come commercially pre-rigged, so you can buy the bobber stop at a store, and along with that bobber stop will come the bead. So now the bead's on the main line. Now, we're going to put our bobber on. I like this bobber here. The secret to fishing a bobber for trout is that they're kind of sensitive when they pull on that bobber, so we want to make sure we use enough weight with this. This is an unweighted bobber. You can buy them also weighted. I prefer to add my own weight. Slide the main line through. Okay, now the bobber's on the main line. Now, to put enough weight on this to make it castable, we're just going to use an egg sinker, just like that other rig that we showed you before, a sliding egg sinker. Simply put it on the main line. You can see this is a little bit more complicated. It has a few more parts than our sliding egg sinker rig. Okay, there it is. You've got the knot, the bobber stop bead, the bobber, and the egg sinker, all which slide on the main line. Now to hold this all in one place, we're gonna use a snap swivel. Remember the cinch knot that we talked about? You just use that here. Okay, now we trim up our tag end. And we've got the most basic part of it put together. All right, now we need a leader, just like we did before. Now, leader length here can be as variable as two to five feet. The, the principle here is to get your leader or your hook far enough away from the lead that the fish don't see it. So two, three feet was adequate. Today I'm using a size four hook. I like octopus hooks, style hooks. These are from Mustad, but there's a number of different manufacturers out there that make them. They're just a great hook for bait fishing. Hook color doesn't matter, it just happens to be that we bought red today. We're tying our cinch knot. We're licking the line. Put it back through the hole, pull it tight. 
trim our tag end off and we've got it. All right, back to our sliding rig. On our swivel, we're gonna tie the same simple cinch knot again. Make a hole with our finger, wrap it around five times. Back through the hole. Get the friction away from it. Pull it tight. And there's your basic rig. Okay, so we've got our bobber stop knot on here and we've got this big long bunch of tag line. You don't need this much line, it gets caught up in the reel. Just take a pair of scissors, trim it back short, but leave enough on there that you could grab a hold of it with pliers and pull it tight again if, you, if need be. All right, how does this system work? Okay, you can see right now that if I had it set like that where the, the knot's right across the bob, atop the bobber, it's only gonna fish two feet deep. But I can adjust this to any depth I want by sliding this bobber stop up the main line. Now I have my bobber set at about 10 feet. And we could set that even deeper if we want. We can just keep pulling line off the reel and pulling the knot up. You can use this system off the shore or you can use it in a boat. And as you can see, when we put it in the water, and you can watch the knot, it, is, it is descends into the water until it hits that bead at the top of the bobber. And that's how it should float. Basically that bobber is neutrally buoyant. We've got about a half ounce of lead underneath it. When a fish comes up and grabs that, he's not going to feel the bobber. It's just going to pull the bobber under gently and you can set the hook. Okay, beautiful trout on our slip bobber rig. We'll let him play himself out here. So you can see that bobber just slides up and down on the main line as you fight the fish. There he is, nice rainbow. So today we're fishing in about 14 feet of water and I had that bobber adjusted to about 12 feet. Just kept it up enough that the fish could see the bait just floating above the bottom. There he is. Beautiful Eastern Washington rainbow. Okay, so you probably noticed in this video that I've been fishing with two poles, and it's okay, it's legal in the state of Washington. You can purchase a two pole license uh, endorsement along with your fishing license, and that's what I have done. And that allows me to really try two different techniques and maybe double my catch rate. I still have the same limit of five trout on this lake, but maybe I can catch them a little bit faster, or I can find the technique that works a little bit better. And it seems to make it a little bit more fun to me for me because I can have two things to work on at the same time. Hopefully today you got a little bit of an insight on how to use two different techniques that we talked to you about, the sliding egg sinker technique and the slip bobber technique. You can see we caught a few fish today. Um, it was a great day out here on the water. I just want to remind you folks of a couple things. One, always wear your life jackets when you're out on the water to be safe. Uh, it's better to be safe than sorry and get home in one piece. And the other is, no matter what piece of water you're fishing in the state of Washington, check our regulation pamphlet and make sure you know the rules before you go out to fish there. Hope to see you guys out on the water and have a great time fishing Washington.